Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, max chunks to make sorted. I feel like there should be another word after that. But anyways, we're given an integer array of length n. n's not like a parameter to this problem, but the numbers that we're given are gonna be in the range from zero to n minus one. So we're gonna have all of those numbers. So let's look at a concrete example. If uh, n equals five, that's not a parameter again. We're going to be given an array, so we can just take the length of this to maybe get the end value. But we will be given the integers 0 through 4. And while the problem description is pretty short, I think it could be a little bit confusing. So the idea is that we want to split the array into some partitions. So they will be contiguous, I guess, even though I don't think that's like specifically stated. But basically, like we could partition it kind of like this, where we have these values and these values and these values. What we want to do is split this array such that if we take each individual portion, so this portion here, this portion here, and this portion here, and we were to sort this and sort this, and sort this so basically piecewise sorting sorting this part individually and then sorting this part individually etc could we form a entire sorted array and basically what is the largest number of chunks or partitions that we could make again that can be kind of confusing so think about for this example what would the answer be well the max number of partitions. So ideally we want to be greedy, right? We want to maximize the number of partitions. They don't give us the word maximize. I feel like largest is not the technically correct word to use in this context. So let's think of it in terms of the max number. Like we're not trying to make the chunks large. I feel like using the word large here can make this confusing, but we're trying to maximize the number of partitions. So ideally, like the maximum would be this, like partition every single number. And then the max possible answer we could have is N in like the best case. And it looks like this particular example actually uh, satisfies that. Like if we were to just sort each of these individually, which is not doing anything, and it basically means that the original array is sorted. But consider the example over here where it's reversed. Think about it for a second. Think about this. All we need to solve this problem is really just a couple key observations. So let me try to walk you through those. This whole thing, I'm trying to like place the partitions. What am I going to do? Dynamic programming? Am I going to do two branches like for every single spot, either put a, a split there or not put a split there? I mean, maybe, I guess that can be our backup plan, but let's just think for a second. In this first spot, I need there to be a zero, right? I'm just looking so far at this portion, just a single element, I need this to be zero. And if it's a zero, fantastic. Then I put the line there. Now, if it's not a zero, what's gonna happen? Think about it. This is part of the partition that's gonna belong to the first element. Like this uh, could be a partition, like we could put the line here or we could put it here and then this would be the partition or we could put it here. This would be the partition. Well, at the very least, we know that we need a zero in this spot. So would we just wait until we find the zero? Like, would we just say, this is the partition? Well, yes, in this example, it is the case. So naively, you might think, okay, so I need the zero in this spot. As soon as I see the zero, I can just put the partition, right? Well, not quite. Let's think about it. Don't just go based on like the first example, feel free to come up with examples of your own. Sometimes that is necessary to solve these problems. So let me swap these. Let me put a zero here and a three here. Now going based on our previous approach, we would say like, this is the partition because once I see the zero, then like if I were to individually sort uh, this part, I'd get the zero here and the four here, and then these values, what would they be? And I think once you kind of ask this question, you've pretty much solved the problem. Well, provided you know a bit of math, and I guess just some of the patterns, they're not like complex patterns, to be honest. Like if you just go through the Neat Code 150, which is completely free, like I guarantee you'll understand them pretty well. Just a little bit of math and prefix sums. But uh, before we even get into that, think about this. What we're trying to do is get the entire array sorted. We need a zero here and we need a one here and we need a two here and we need a three here and we need a four here. Now it becomes 
kind of clear. Like this is the array that we're trying to create. And when I'm trying to pick the first partition, what am I trying to do? I'm asking the question, can I put the first partition here? I want to be greedy. I want to put the partition there. That's what I want if I can do it, but I can't. How do I know I can't? Because this value is not a zero. Okay, let's put uh, the partition here. Let's try to. Once again, I can't. I have zero and four, but what I needed was zero and one. It doesn't matter what order they were in, but I needed them. Well, I guess the order does matter because you know we could have put the partition here, but I hope you get the point. We need zero one, we have zero four. So that's the problem. And then we can kind of just keep going like that. Now, how do we make that comparison? Are we going to compare the subarrays? We could, I mean, we could say this is the expected output, this is what we have, but could we do something even more simple? Because, I mean, how many different partitions could we make? We could have like this as a partition, or this as the first, or this, or this, or that. You're probably thinking, okay, sure, once you get the first partition, however you do it, well, how are you gonna get the second partition? Well, the second partition doesn't necessarily have to be distinct from this one because this one sort of has a dependency on the previous one anyway. So again, how do we make that comparison? I think if you just know the math, it's not that uh, difficult. Like the fact that the numbers we were given are zero through N, they are different numbers. This is what the expected array is supposed to look like. If we put a partition here, then we expect the sum of this to be zero. If we put the partition here, we expect the sum of this to be one. If the sum of this is one, we guarantee we have zero one because it's not like we have any other choices. And so then you get here, zero, one, two, the sum has to be three here. The sum has to be six. And even if we did the first partition, now we're looking at the second partition. Well, if we want to put the partition here, we expect the entire sum of everything we've seen, AKA the prefix sum. Hopefully you've seen this pattern before. If not, definitely check out Neatcode.io, at least at some point. Uh, but that's the idea. So long story short, to solve this problem, we can say this. I look here, I'm iterating basically. So it's a linear scan and I'm computing the prefix sum. So right now I have at every step, I'm gonna have my current sum. And as I'm doing that, I can iterate over the numbers zero through N pretty much at the same time. It's easy to do that. And since there isn't a match right now, don't put the partition there and we kind of just keep going like that. So just keep adding numbers, get the current sum. Um, also at the same time, get the expected sum, compare them, just keep going. And for this example, it's going to take the entire array for us to arrive at like the expected output. There should have been three here, sorry. And when you think about it, it does make sense that it would take the entire thing because if you look here, we don't have all the numbers. Here again, we don't have all the numbers. The fact that we have a four, we kind of already know that we have to wait until we at least get there. Another way, I guess, to think about this would be just kind of keep track of the max number. And in fact, I think that's probably easier to code up. So I'll go ahead and do it this way. But if you do it the other way, I promise you it'll work. I just think this was maybe a little bit easier to kind of explain. But now that I think of it, this might have been the easier way. So just to make sure we visualize this, when we see a number, we know whatever the max is right now it's four. We'll have to at least wait until we get to this index before we can make a partition. I guess if you want to, you could kind of make a jump. So you could optimize this slightly better than like a standard linear time algorithm, but not like in terms of big O, it'll still be linear in terms of big O because the worst case could be an example like this one where we're just kind of jumping uh, by almost zero each time. Like this is the partition, this is the partition and yeah. Just to go through an example that has not like five and one partition, let's look at a different one. So just a quick dry run here, we have one. Okay, I have to wait at least until I get there. And so now I'm here, the max, which is one, matches the current index, which is one. So just to put the indexes here. So here, I'm gonna put the partition. Okay, now I'm here. I have two, that's the max I've seen so far. I'm at index two, so great, I put the partition. I'm at three. Index three, put the partition. So it looks like we had one, two, three, four partitions. We can just keep track of like a counter. I'll do that with the result variable. So let's code up this linear time approach. I don't know if you guys care about this, but I was curious what my original submission looked like on this about four years ago, uh, no data. So this one was, I believe, technically a brute force solution. I think this was N squared actually of use the same idea and i think this one looks like this is the same as the one i'm going to code up today so 
let's go ahead and get into it. So what we want to do is go through the array. I'm going to use enumerate in Python because it's very nice. We can unpack the index and the number at the same time because we're going to need both of them. We want to maintain the current max. It's going to be the max of n and whatever the current max originally is. What is it originally though? Well, we're given zero through n, so I guess negative one isn't a bad value to set it to. And let's also maintain the result. So that's the count of the sorted chunks, like the different partitions. And that's what we're gonna return, so down here. And now the problem is as easy as just saying, if the current max is equal to the index, increment the result by one. Let's run it and it looks like it works. I'm pretty sure it's efficient, at least in terms of big O. And I think the code is as clean as you can get it. I mean, I'm sure some of you can put this into a one-liner or something, but in terms of interviews, I think this is a sufficient solution. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.